If you've got the time, I've got a tail. An interdimensional being from beyond the void. Its mere presence can warp the mind of all but the most iron-willed. I smelled your fear, human! Good analysis, Red. You think I was out of it? My friend, this ain't no story. Maybe one day you too will believe. Welcome back to the Uranium Viva channel. With Season 12 Rip Daring and the Cryptid Hunt going live tomorrow, we decided it was a good time to finally test something cryptid related that's been on our schedule for a while. The elusive Flatwoods Monster is one of the most unique additions that came with Fallout 76. A malform is eaten in a battle suit, its unique ability allows it to control almost anything in its immediate vicinity. But just how far does this power extend? Are all the major bosses in Fallout 76 affected by it? And is there a limit to how many creatures it can control at one time? These are all questions I was eager to find answers to, so we set off to find one and drag it all over the map. You will likely have seen a lot of our findings in the opening segment, but a lot more happened during our journey. Kicking things off, we had to find one first, and the method I used to guarantee that you can get one to spawn revolves around the daily quest Queen of the Hunt. Tasked with investigating free sites in search of a random cryptid, you will likely need to reset this multiple times by simply heading back to the main menu and reloading. As long as you don't complete the quest each site will reset, when you load back in and doing this enough times eventually a Flatwoods monster will spawn. But it can take a while. Once you are successful, a really cool detail that will make this much easier is this particular Flatwoods monster is relentless. I haven't tested this on any other random spawns, but the Queen of the Hunt Cryptid will literally chase you across the map, and unlike other enemies, its teleporting ability will allow it to close the distance with ease. First stop on the list though was my camp, just next to Harper's Ferry. Progress was a little slow at first as the Cryptid attracted all kinds of attention on route, but eventually we arrived and immediately my camp underwent some changes. Turrets, the Collectron, and even my light ally all displayed a new allegiance to my guests. It should be noted that none of these actually turned hostile, including my pet Deathclaw. We were almost ready to head out to the next test site before the Flatwoods monster actually managed to get stuck behind my symptomatic. After inspecting our players for a while, we decided to check a couple more things. Chickens, it transpires, are unaffected by the cryptid. Unfortunately, the testing was cut short as a horde of possessed anglers arrived to destroy my camp. Low on resources, it seemed like a good time to call it quits, switching to a different camp slot and getting out of there. Floating in the river momentarily, the Flatwoods monster recovered, teleporting onto dry land and the chase was back on. The next location we wanted to take it to was Fisher Site Prime, which honestly took a long time to get to. Moving through dense forests or ditches delayed our pursuer, but pausing at abandoned bog town it was time to witness some bigger creatures under its thrall. A super mutant behemoth is a fix spawn for this location, and will often be joined by some fog crawlers. All instantaneously fell under the Flatwoods monster's control, pausing their own battle to focus on us instead. And yeah, a bit of a heart in mouth moment here. But further on we have another entity that is actually immune. Mr. Squeeze is free to sell his lemonade in peace, it turns out. With a nuke dropped and Scorch Earth active, it was time to see the results. It should be noted that I have actually previously seen footage of the Flatwoods monster here, and it does actually control all the entities at this boss fight, but it was still impressive seeing it in person. We were actually controlling everything that spawns simultaneously. But after a moment the Queen was dead, and the first session was over. The test subject 1 was a good sport, but finishing off I wanted to have a look inside the suit in camera mode. It's a bit janky doing this, but you can see tiny legs inside the carapace, and changing the view distance for the faceplate you can actually see what's causing the purple glowing eye effects, which is actually goggles. Getting a bit closer, and yes, the unmistakable face of a Zetan. Day 2, and this was slated to be an even bigger undertaking. Although I've seen footage of the Scorched Beast Queen boss fight before, a Flatbus monster present at seismic activity on Cryptid was a new challenge. And yes, from the starting location this was going to be a bit of a trek. Running past the pumpkin patch, the local fauna didn't stand a chance, and an interesting detail here, the Deathclaw suffered possibly the worst, as it was first scorched and then possessed within seconds. And I think this is a good point to discuss some of the lore ramifications of the Flatwoods monster, I think. Because it must be said that any good build and any good weapon can easily make sure to pretty much anything in this game. And the Flatwoods monster is definitely no exception to that rule. But the fact it can so easily control scorched in particular, which are themselves prey to an aggressive hive mind, really puts this creature's power level above anything else in my mind. Not just in Fallout 76 either, any Fallout title. Moving on, stopping off at Fort Atlas and Russell Dorsey's mind was up to the task, 
as he and the other human residents were unaffected. We didn't end up testing this at other player hub locations, but I expect anyone at Foundation or Creator will also be similarly unaffected, as I don't think they can even get hostile with basic enemies. The road past White Springs presented more foot soldiers, ghouls, vertibots and sentry bots, and super mutants too. After some time we reached our goal, and gathered at the wreckage of the Nuka Launcher Coaster we awaited the Ultrasite Titan, and it turns out it gets possessed the moment that it spawns. And yeah, similar to the Scorch Beast Queen, so was everything else. Seismic activity spawns a lot of entities pretty continuously, but there didn't seem to be a limit to what this creature can control at one time. But there is another boss fight close by that I think can rival it for continuous spawns, and that's encrypted. So on to the final location. Initially this fight played out in a similar fashion, but it became clear once the imposter sheepscotch had actually decloaked that it was initially unaffected. Honestly not really sure what happened here, it might have just been a visual glitch, because clearing out some more of the robots did seem to trigger a change. Fighting back to back, this pair went out with a bang, and then another bang. With that though, this little adventure was over, and it was time to reflect on what we learnt. Quick side note, if you want to reveal those tiny legs, attacking the carapace will actually see it pop open. But yeah, on reflection then. Shortly by proxy, this controlling ability makes the Flatwoods monster one of the most powerful creatures in the entire Fallout series. Of course, we are limited to what we can test it on in Fallout 76, but it really makes me hope that we learn more about it in future updates. Its position in the Zetan hierarchy in particular, as it appears to be the most dangerous variant we can actually face. So, what could possibly rival this in a battle of the wills? Barring us, of course. Well, one matchup I'd love to see is the Interloper. Another creature credited with extreme psychic abilities, the Interloper managed to convince members of the Cult of the Mothman to travel to its home in Lucky Hole Mine, with many emptying vials of sacrificial blood, and even their own blood, onto the roots of the creature. Which do you think is shaping up to be more powerful, though? The Flowerbird's Monster or the Interloper? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, it's a bit different to our usual content, but we had fun dragging this around and seeing how it could affect different scenarios. And yeah, really hoping we get to learn more about this and the Zetans in general in future updates. Shout out to Epic Nate as well, who recently made a great lore deep dive on the Zetans throughout the Fallout series, and actually featured some of these shots in his last video. Link to that in the comments, it's a really great watch. If you enjoyed this particular video, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. We post a variety of Fallout 76 content, so turning on the bell icon is definitely the best way to stay up to date. With that said though, I'm off. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.